Thanks, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back again. Uh, I always love uh, presenting a network field day. It's a fantastic opportunity to get in front of the customers, get in front of the you know industry leaders and luminaries such as yourself. So uh, appreciate having us back out again. And um, with that, I'm just going to hop right into it. So uh, what I thought we thought would be useful is a bit of a highlight reel that rolls up everything that you saw today with a slightly dis different aspect with you know, like an operational journey using some of the features kind of end to end and slightly different use cases. Just a few slides. What I want to show is to reinforce the concepts of how you can quickly and reliably, you know, put new services, uh, you know, instantiate new services, how you can recover good state, you know, from, from bad to good or broken to unbroken. Um, how you can use Appster and its intent-based platform to quickly identify like service level outages and in real time and historical analytics. Um, so that's a lot of words. And instead, it's easier to say this uh, using um, a phrase uh, from someone I respect in the industry and a good friend who essentially says, we do two things. We go from aha uh -huh to kaching quickly, and we go from oh crap to all clear quickly. And so, you know, that's fundamentally what it's about because when, you know, uh, it's either about generating cash or, you know, I worked a long time in the, in the federal government and, and those communities, and it's either about cash or it's about, you know, human lives. And either you want to get something out the door to get cash quickly or, or you know, to, um, uh, you know, for some sort of mission, or, you know, you want to restore service quickly, because even if it's not loss of money, it's like loss of reputation and which, you know, essentially ends up to being loss of money. Um, and with that, I just want to, you know, jump right into the demo and, and just sort of recap a few things we saw today. So the first one is uh, I have a topology here and a pretty humble topology, a little 3D view going. Uh, and, you know, the setup is here. We have an amazing new app and we think we're ready to roll this out and we need to roll it out quickly across the entire data center. And so what I want to do is the first thing I want to do is, you know, just create a new routing zone. You know, I want to put this in prod because why would I put it anywhere else? So in, in one click there, there's additional options that's available to you as a user, but it is simple as one click. And again, you don't have to be aware of the underlying uh, vendor context. And the next thing you do is essentially just make red things turn green. And I'm gonna treat this like cattle and make red things turn green. So that was it. I now have a, a routing zone of the underlying construct at this moment in time as a verf. And now I wanna put my, you know, I wanna insta establish my amazing new app. So this is like amazing. Yep. Put that in prod. And let's see these validations, see if they work. And I want to put this everywhere. And I'm going to pull again, I'm going to enable this and I'm going to pull it uh, from a resource pool directly from, from Abstra. And so in uh, a few seconds there, we got this and say, okay, well, what pool would you like to pull this from? I have several here. So I'm just going to say, again, I don't really care. And I can look over and say, yep, this is my amazing new app. And if I were to look into um, my amazing app, you can see all of the variables that were auto assigned pulled from the pool, sorry about my accent there, as well as um, you can see what, what was staged up. And I'm gonna say, yep, this is exactly what I want. If I were to go back and, uh, and look at it in a slightly different way, I could look at the racks, look at the rendered configuration, scroll down to my vendor of choice, scroll down to my vendor of choice, and look at the individual configuration and you can see here's my amazing new app with all of the variables and all the appropriate configurations um, for that. And that's pretty much it. So in a few minutes, I can do that. I can document it, it's an amazing app. And DJ did this. So in maybe two or three minutes there, I've done that. And next question is, well, that's, that's awesome, but how do I recover from state? So the setup here is that, uh, that you know, using time Voyager, we had a bug in the, in the system or marketing, you know, marketing wants to market. And they said, you know, we want to hold off on this launch. We don't want to launch it yet, or we found a bug. So let's roll back. But now it's been a couple hours, DJ's out to launch and some other person is in there and, and it is, okay, well, how do I roll back? What devices is this? What configuration state, you know, how do I go from broken to unbroken? Uh, and again, it's, uh, this is like rollback on steroids because it's the entire data center as a whole. It's an atomic unit, it's not individual devices. So I can go from broken to unbroken. Um, it looks like somebody did this one. So if I jump back, you know, right before I added tags, this works and operates very much like version control. So I can jump back to a moment in time and say, you know, here I'm going to remove this amazing app. Um, and I can see this network parameters, which I'm moving and uh, again, additional uh, attributes. 
Uh, but I can, you know, if I wanted to, I can make additional changes here. I could branch. I could take, I could check out this branch and make additional changes and branch that. But essentially what I want to do here is just, you know, sad face, app not ready for this DJ. And with that, we're able to enable a new application as well as roll back the entire state of my data center um, from every interface and every application across the board. Um, so, you know, that is aha to Kachin quickly and, and a bit of like, oh crap, you know, all clear quickly. So that, you know, the next aspect is there's the angry SAP folks and the angry SAP folks said, look, I was supposed to have a data replication. And last night I didn't get the data replication. I don't know what's going on. It's gotta be a network problem, it's you. And so now it's like the burden of truth is on us and we want to eliminate this complex, you know, this, the, the complexity of it. And we want some way to, you know, provide this mean time to innocence. So in this topology, um, just to show real quick, this is a Franken topology that we have here, but everything is normalized. The UI is normalized, the API is normalized, and more appropriately, the data analytics are normalized. So if I look at full, we have a, a traffic heat layer here that allows us to look at data in real time and layer it over top of the physical topology. And I can hover over and say, hey, you know, even though this switch, uh, this particular device isn't doing a whole lot, we understand the amount of traffic that's using. We understand information about the underlying device. And I can say, you know what, well, this one, if I click, it's a bit like Google Maps, so I can drill down, get additional information. The further I go, the more information I get. So I'm gonna drill down a little bit further. And if I hover over, I'm bubbled up with additional information. Um, so, you know, much of this information are, are violations, like if I had a lot of runs or giants or a lot of multicast traffic I can catch with IBA, but maybe there's something else that I wanted to see, but it's at your fingertips, you know, where you can just, you know, drag here. But the real magic comes when you start to look uh, at heat maps and heat, uh, heat views. So if I were to change this and say, you know, I want to look at a slightly different rack, potentially. Let's look at, uh, let's do this, let's start from the beginning. So rack one, uh, let's see, server one. And now I, I wanna say, instead of all neighbors, that's kind of boring. I wanna see what it looks like, you know, the data traffic, because he says, you know, is between these servers, the replication with between these two servers. So this is, you know, something very difficult and not really impossible to get the, this level of context out. It is all of the paths between two networks and the data that is transmitting in real time. And you can hover over every link, but again, you know, I said it was last night, so I need to rewind. I need a DVR for my entire data center and look at this. And you can see if I rolled back during that time, you said, oh, you know, last night during some time, I was supposed to have this data that was traversing. And I can look in here and say, well, you know, I didn't really see that data, right? Whatever you're saying happened did not happen. I can demonstrably prove that. And if I scroll around and can say, but, you know, the day before, I can see it. So, you know, check the application. So again, it's this mean time to innocence, mean time to resolution. Um, and this is uh, uh, many places across the product. Um, and just in the interest of time, uh, I hoped that this would happen. I did a quick recording where we do the same thing uh, as a recap for uh, which I find really important. It's just not configuration. It's the understanding of the network state whereby I can say, hey, you know, I have this route in 10.00 slash 32 destination. And it's supposed to have a next hop, but there's too much cognitive debt to everyone to remember like, what is 172.16.04? Like, I have no idea what that is. So we're automatically taking data from the devices and marrying it contextualized. So I can say, hey, I was expecting that route from spine one XEEE, blah. And, but instead I'm getting a partial route. It's violating of intent. There's something there, but it's broken. I can see that instead I'm getting it from, um, you know, I'm getting it from spine two. So it's very contextualized real-time data based on network state, not just configuration. Uh, and as Calvin and a few other folks have shown, you can also do this for configuration. So this is very good for documentation, but also for enhanced security posture. This could be nefarious for someone trying to, you know, add a, add a, a you know, a, a route to, you know, run information through, you know, uh, an, an unfriendly, <laughs> somewhere you don't want or an unfriendly nation and you wanna be able to capture that. But what I've also done in this is, is showing that we have an EVPN VXLAN type five. So EVPN, fairly complicated protocol, um, and all of your services and all your applications now live in the overlay. What we've done is codified that behavior and understanding how the network behaves and, and how the route to poly, and how the route expectation should be based on how you configured your data center. So if you have hundred VLANs on 50 racks and they have random dispersion, we understand where the type three routes would be, where the flooding domain is, where the type five routes are, um, which is in, incredibly powerful 
um, capability. And so just in a real quick way, I can, you know, additionally have uh, leverage the graph database to say, hey, I want to know my east to west traffic in the last 12 years, you know, 12 years, 12 hours, so that, uh, you know, instead of going to another dashboard and looking at some, device, you know, some piece of software that you pay just to do trending analysis, it's built right in and you can query that graph and say, I, you know, I want to know between only these servers and in a previous video, Claire used it so you can tag it to applications using tags. But uh, for this purpose, what I'm showing, whoop, what I'm showing here is that every device in the network is reporting that Leaf 3 is missing that, oh my God, EVPN type five issues. Uh, so I should probably check that out. And I'm and seeing this here. And this is the red database 01. So just skipping ahead a little bit here for time so I can stay on track because I am the last presenter of the day and people are thirsty. And uh, so skip, skip, skip. And what I wanna do here is this was talked about is you can choose to override and apply this full configuration. And in this demo, I want to apply this full configuration. And what I've done here is um, I forced, uh, I made a configuration. I've shut down, oops, I've shut down this, uh, the VN2 or the IRB for this VXLAN to simulate a type five. And what I want to do is say, you know, I don't want that. I don't know who put this in and I want to apply the full configuration. And just like that, everything is okay. So this is a chance where I've gone from really, oh crap, to all clear from both you know, the protocol and the overlay to configuration deviations to BGP and everything. Perhaps a more generic abstract question, but uh, since we're getting to the end, I'll ask it here. Um, communication from Abstra to the network devices to actually apply the configuration. First off, can that happen over IPv6 only? Can it happen? Um... So the communication from Abstra to the individual devices can happen in a few different ways. One is a, an agent that lives on box that communicates through a proprietary binary channel. And the other one is off box. In the case of off box, as an example with, with Junos, it communicates uh, over uh, RESTCOM through TLS connection. Okay, and that supports V6? Yes, I believe, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it does. V6 is pretty much a first class citizen across all of our products. Perfect. And then you answered my second question about the actual communication method to get things on the device with RESTCONF for Juno. So cool. Thanks. No problem.